Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So we prepare to worship God by saying, Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we take a moment to consider how we have behaved in the last week, things that we've said to people, our attitudes, and whether we've spent any time with God. And we come to confess our sins together. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. The Lord hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. The Lord hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. The Lord hear us and help us. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we say the Gloria together. Glory, glory to God, God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let's pray the collect for the week together. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those who serve. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. The first reading is taken from Acts chapter 8. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up, go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you're reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he doesn't open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you does the prophet say this? About himself? Or about someone else. Then Philip began to speak. 
And starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptised? He commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loves us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us his Spirit, and we have seen and been testified that the Father has sent his Son as the Saviour of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. He has defeated the powers of death. Hallelujah. Jesus turns our sorrow into dancing. Hallelujah. He has the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. 
Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Luke's Gospel is the Gospel written very much with the Gentiles in mind, and also with the outcasts of society playing a key role in the important parts of the story of Jesus. It is in Luke's Gospel that the angel Gabriel appears to the shepherds, a group of poor men who would not have been welcome in the town of Bethlehem, who lived on the edge looking after their sheep. It is in Luke's Gospel that we hear how it was the women visiting Jesus' tomb who were the first to proclaim the resurrection, and the men didn't believe them. It is the women who are centre stage there. Remember that Luke wrote not only the Gospel that bears his name, but also the book of the Acts of the Apostles, from which we read right through Eastertide. One of these key moments involving an outcast, an outsider, comes again in Acts chapter 8, which we heard Hilary read us this morning. The mysterious story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. The eunuch is a figure who is on the edge of society in every possible way. He is a black man from far away Ethiopia. He is a true foreigner visiting Israel. He is a eunuch. Eunuchs were men who were castrated as children to serve in the royal courts. They were particularly valued because of course they could not father children to provide rival heirs to the throne. There are quite a few eunuchs in the Bible. They were men who were born into slavery, castrated, of course, against their will, and although were considered valuable as servants, they were not considered to be fully human or fully male. Sexually, they were outsiders. The book of Deuteronomy declares that anyone who has been castrated is not permitted to attend the Lord's assembly. And yet this eunuch from Africa has been visiting Jerusalem to worship, probably at the Passover festival. He's not Jewish, but he clearly believes in the Jewish God and is wealthy enough to have obtained a copy of the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. While he was in Jerusalem, he would not have been permitted to join in with the worship of the temple. He would have only been able to go so far as the outer courtyard with the women and other foreigners. Remember the same area where Jesus drove out the money changers. People would have stared at such a man with black skin, probably very tall, as eunuchs grew tall and lanky, and he probably had an effeminate voice. Was there anything to stop this eunuch becoming a Jew? Well, yes, everything. He was not born into a Jewish family. He is foreign. He is a eunuch, through no fault of his own. He cannot attend Jewish worship services with the other Jewish men. Just as the shepherds were ignored by wider society and the women ignored when they shared what, that they had seen the risen Christ, again, God sends an angel to show us all the people he sees, the people he cares about. God sends an angel to the apostle Philip and tells Philip to go to the wilderness road, a frightening assignment to walk into the unknown. But when Philip gets there, he sees a grand chariot with a politician from the court of the Candace, the Queen of the Ethiopians. This is a successor of the Queen of Sheba, who visited King Solomon. And he can hear someone reading from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Remember, in the ancient world, people always would read aloud. They wouldn't read in their heads like we do today. Imagine hearing these words for the first time. Imagine the eunuch someone who was mutilated as a child, which meant that he could never be fully a man, never father children, reading these words from Isaiah. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, 
and like a lamb silenced before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation, for his life is taken away from the earth? To the eunuch, he must have felt he could have written those words about himself. So he asks Philip, who is the prophet speaking about? And Philip proceeds to tell the man all about Jesus and about how Jesus was tortured and killed. The eunuch sees himself in Christ. He identifies with him. He hears how all those things that were once preventing him from being included in the fold all melt away with Jesus. The eunuch says with great joy, for what is there to prevent me from being baptised? And he calls for the chariot to halt, and they jump out, and Philip says, nothing, there's nothing to prevent you from being baptised. And a black, non-gender conforming foreign man who has been excluded all his life is the first person to be baptised into the church. A man who is unable to have children becomes the spiritual father of many, because the church grows not through procreation, but through baptism. We often say that the church was born on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came, but perhaps it was truly born on the day this eunuch was baptised by Philip, the first convert to the faith. The eunuch is drawn to the person of Christ, and discovers in Christ an empathy with his suffering and a welcome where before he had always been told he had to stand on the outside looking in. This is the welcome we receive when we are baptised, that we all belong, that there is nothing to prevent you from being baptised, there is nothing to prevent you from being included. With the eunuch's baptism, the precedent is set the pattern for belonging in the church is laid out for us to follow. So may we provide such a radical welcome. May we seek out those on the wilderness road, those who are curious about faith but feel that the church maybe isn't for them. May we see the humanity in all we meet, regardless of race, gender, sexuality and background. May we rejoice with the eunuch who finally found his home in Christ, a place for him to belong. Amen. as you stand as you are able, as we declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, Begotten and not made, of the one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one 
Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We have acknowledged one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we come to pray. notice about um, our communion and um, some of you haven't been for a little while so um, when it comes to communion if you if you come in queue um, very carefully just like you would if you were at the post office but it's a much more profound experience than that <laughs> you stand on the um, crosses to keep it socially distanced and um, you can remove your mask when you get to the front 
and you'll receive um, communion just in the bread form um, and then make your way back through the children's chapel and back to your seat carefully. Um, if you would rather not receive um, the bread but you would like to come up for a blessing, please bring um, the order of service with you um, and that communicates to me that you want a blessing rather than uh, receiving the bread. Um, that's easier than trying to speak through two masks basically in this muffled way. Um, so that's how we're doing communion at the moment. So um, yeah, that's fine. Have a Please would you stand as you are able for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Alleluia. So we offer one another a greeting, safe greeting. <laughs> Stay where you are, wave at everybody. Peace be with you all. Risen Lord Jesus Christ, we believe you and all we have heard is true. When you break bread, may we recognise you as the fire that burns within us, that we may bring light to your world. Amen. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our beauty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful work. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gates of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, Earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the mother of Christ, St. John the Baptist, St. James, and all your saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Thank you. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Before I do the final blessing, just be careful as you leave church this morning that we don't end up with a bottleneck at the door. Uh, do try to maintain social distancing. I'm sure you want to greet one another, but it might be easier to have a chat outside rather than squashed up inside church. So just be careful as you leave and just, just leave in a sensible way. So let's bow our heads to receive God's blessing.
May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. And so, with the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work within you, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah.